Sorry for carrying on about this right now, but I just find it too interesting not to. I made a video about uh, Pan Am's historic pole-to-pole -pole circumnavigation flight yesterday. And then someone, of course, asked, well, what about one more orbit, the pole-to-pole -pole circumnavigation record flight from July 2019? So I figured I would make a quick video about that as well, give it the same treatment, primarily because there's an interesting comparison to be made between those two flights, or, you know, interesting to me anyway. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on this, so let's go through this particular flight real quick. And I apologize for choosing purple as a color. You'll see in a moment why I did that. Uh, the flight took off in Kennedy Space Center, Florida. Uh, flew due north to the North Pole, same as the other flight, made a right turn by about 30 degrees at the North Pole, flew straight down to Kazakhstan, landed in uh, Nur Sultan, the capital of Kazakhstan, refueled, took back off, flew towards Port Louis, Mauritius, landed, refueled, took off, flew then due south towards the South Pole, at the geographic South Pole, made a 60 degree right turn, flew due north, landed in Punta Arenas, Chile, and then flew straight back up along a Great Circle route to Kennedy Space Center. Um, as with the other flight, I let my program calculate the distances. I added them all up. I compared them to the official distance value that is plotted on one more orbit website. It matches up to 0 0.4 kilometers, which is due to rounding. Um, so even though this flight has tracking data, uh, but it wasn't able to be tracked close to the poles because there are no ground-based tracking stations there. You can imagine why. Um, so again, this is not super clear where they actually went when they crossed both of the poles, but uh, this seems to be pretty consistent with what they did. So here's the point and the comparison I was going to make. If we look at this route, uh, for one, we see it is a lot less zigzagged than uh, Pan Am 50's route. It's much straighter, which is one of the reasons why they were able to complete the circumnavigation much more quickly. But the other thing you notice is that there's sort of an angle to it. And this is a little bit hard to see with the opaque globe because half of the course is hidden. So I'm going to make the globe transparent so we can see it a little bit better. And oh, sorry, ignore the outer core and the inner core. They don't have anything to do with this. So if you look at this, you can see I'm going to put the, I'm going to align the North Pole and the South Pole here in the same point that they took off along basically one meridian, but they made turns at both the poles. So the two halves of their trip, the one where they went from the North Pole to the South Pole, and then the one where they well essentially went back from the South Pole to the North Pole, they are not really opposite of each other. Uh, there are no antipolar points. And that's, I think, an interesting comparison, because if you bring back the Pan Am flight, then we see that they did the same thing. They also took turns at the poles, but they turned left at one pole and turned right at the other pole. So they ended up making this, what in this pole of view looks like a figure eight. And it turns out that there's actually, that these legs or the two halves of the flights are more opposite of each other. So I consider that just more pleasingly circumnavigational, if you allow me that phrase. Uh, let's have a closer look at that. Um, in this particular view, what we have is these crosshairs on the screen, they indicate the center of the globe. And so what, what happens when we line up one point of the flight route that is in front of us, and then the other, uh, then uh, whatever is exactly behind the crosshairs is antipolar, meaning that is on the exact opposite side of the globe. So here we have the North Pole lined up with the crosshairs. So then the South Pole ends up exactly behind the crosshairs because those are antipoles. And obviously the North Pole and South Pole uh, are antipodes on this particular flight path. But as we go through the flight path, and I keep moving this, you notice that no matter where I am on the flight path, there's never another part, another point of the flight path exactly on the other side of the crosshairs. So no points of this flight path, except the poles themselves, like here we have the South Pole, are exactly antipodal to each other. That doesn't take anything away from, from this crew's achievement. Um, they followed the rules for circumnavigation set by the International Aeronautic Federation, uh, and of course, having this sort of slight wedge angle between their half part doesn't mean that their distance is any shorter or anything. It just means that, you know, to me at least, it's a little bit less pleasing, if I want to say so. Uh, let's do the same thing for the Pan Am flight route and check it out there. Uh, let me see, I'm going to make this one invisible. So obviously, they also contain both the geographic poles, so it is interpolar there. But then, as we, I'm looking at the South Pole right now, let me turn it over. Uh, 
as we go, let's start this way from the North Pole to London. And these are almost interpolar, these two parts, but not exactly. So then we are going off the opposite path. And then here we are quite on the opposite. But then here we notice that there are two points on the path that are exactly interpolar to each other. So in other words, this flight route had two sets of interpolar points as opposed to only one set of points um, on the one more orbit flight. And I made a pretty big deal about this in the last video where I said this is to me a true circle navigation because they went to the left and to the right of the ideal meridian. Now let me show back that ideal meridian that I had. And of course the reason why I showed it is that it has exactly the same interpolar crossings as the flight path. It touches the flight path on the north and south pole and it touches it in the two points where points on the flight path are exactly interpolar to each other. So again, this is not in any way detracting from what these guys did. It doesn't in any way affect the result. I just thought it was an interesting difference that uh, Pan Am's flight, which just looks a lot more circumspect, is in some ways a better representation of a circumnavigation uh, than uh, one more orbit's flights. And that's pretty much all I wanted to say about that. So thank you for watching this again, and I promise this is going to be the last one. Thank you.